Hey everyone, my name is Mark. I'm a product owner at Pluggable Performance. Recently, we released our Nix HDMI streaming and capture card. We get a lot of really great feedback from our customers uh, regarding some of the things that they can do with our products. And some of them can be complicated, some of them can be simple. Uh, but a lot of times we like to ensure that we are doing everything that we can to answer all their questions. The main focus of the Nix HDMI streaming and capture card is being able to capture HDMI based sources via streaming software such as OBS, XSplit, things like that. Uh, and one of the questions that we got was, can I use more than one? While it's certainly possible depending on the system that you have uh, with multiple USB 3.0 ports, um, USB 2.0 ports, it is normal that people will use one to two, maybe one for their camera and one for their console. But here at Pluggable, we like to do things a little bit bigger. <laughs> so we decided that we were gonna try to hook up six capture cards. We had to get six individual sources. So we have four laptops, uh, two video game consoles, and each individual source has its own pass-through via the near zero latency pass-through on the Nix HDMI capture card. With this, you're able to connect the source device into the in port, connect the display via the out port so that you can see what's on the source device on another outputted monitor. So now that we have six of them connected, running all kinds of things from video games to videos, uh, the next difficult problem was how do we get all of these to connect to the same computer at this much of a distance? We grabbed one of our other products that we have, which is a USB 3.0 10 meter extension cable. These cables are unique that they have their own AC adapter so that you won't lose any uh, data or video transmission when it's plugged into its power source. So now that we know that all the capture cards are lit and working, the next step is to go into OBS and connect each individual capture card in their default settings and see if we can see what's on these displays inside of OBS. So now that we have all of the displays and all these sources connected to their individual capture cards, we need to take those capture cards and input them into OBS. We already pre-configured these before the setup just to show what it was like once they were all connected and ready to go. So as you can see, we have an Xbox, a Dell Chromebook, uh, an HP Windows system, a Nintendo Switch, and two Dell XPSs. So once I go through and show these, You can see that we're capturing six total sources in the same OBS instance. Uh, they're all running at 1920 by 1080, both inputted from the source system and outputted inside of OBS and well as a stream. Uh, there is some resolution changes that you'll see because we've shrunk each image in order to see everything that's on uh, the screen, but it will be captured and outputted at 60 FPS by 1920 by 1080. One of the unique features about the Nix is its ability to really easily connect and work. Uh, one of the hard parts about doing multiple versions of the Nix HDMI streaming and capture card inside of OBS is that you don't actually get to see uh, a name that is unique to each individual device as the USB controller and the operating system will just give, the, give them all the same name. We have mitigated this by installing each one one by one and then giving it a unique video capture device name inside of OBS. Uh, so you can see we have one for the Xbox, which is this one, and then one for the Switch, which is this one. So now that we have all the individual capture cards installed inside of OBS, we can take a look at some of the properties of each capture card that you would normally see when connecting one, two, uh, any amount at the same time. So we'll go into properties uh, inside of OBS for the video capture device. And the cool feature with the Nix HDMI streaming and capture card is that it uses UVC drivers that are baked into the operating system in order to install. This makes it easier for connecting or adding anything to any of your current streaming setups without having to download any additional software. There's no proprietary software. There's no multiple uses of software at the same time. It just gets read inside of the operating system as a basic UVC device. Uh, most users will want to customize the setup of the configuration of the capture card. And inside of here, you can see that we've done a custom res resolution of 1920 by 1080, 60 FPS. The video format on this particular system is MJPEG because we have it connected to a USB 2.0 port. 
When connecting the Nix HDMI streaming capture card to a USB 3.0 system, you'll have a video format called YUI, which is a much better outputted resolution, much better with colors, and more than likely the quality that you want while streaming your video games. You can set the coloring based off of the source system. So we have a standard PC connected, so we can do both partial and full. And this will adjust the color gamma range that the capture card is seeing. Uh, you can also capture audio being outputted via the HDMI cable, and we have some really great guides on, on our Pluggable Performance website showing you how to fix sync delays, um, audio quality issues, or outputting the audio while also uh, being able to hear it inside of OBS, just in case you connect the source system that doesn't have its own internal speakers. So now that we've shown you which each properties of each individual capture card inside of OBS looks like from its outputted resolution, the amount of frames per second it's recording, you can now see that we have six total devices being captured inside of OBS. Each box is an indicator of the display or output of each individual source from the Xbox to the Nintendo to the four PCs that we have. Uh, some questions to clear up that we know a lot of you will be asking. Do I need a super huge, insanely great computer to do this? Not so much. Uh, the custom computer that we used inside of this video is very limited. It has an Intel Core i5-7400. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM and a standard 256 gigabyte SSD. It usually doesn't require a huge amount of resources with our capture card, especially when you only have one. We normally try to stay within one to 7% CPU usage while streaming and recording. Uh, but with six total ones connected and a fairly third generation, seventh generation style of processor, you're probably gonna be around 10% per capture card that you install. It may be possible to do more than six. This all depends on the individual USB controller on your system and available ports. Uh, other questions that we had was, can we use these with ex extension cables? 100%, as long as they're AC powered, which means that they have their own individual power source, you should be able to connect your Nix capture card without losing any signal, without any degradation in the video, and nothing sort of stopping you from being able to be farther away from your capture card than while at your streaming PC. So now that we've shown you what it's like to capture six total devices via six Nix HDMI streaming and capture cards, make sure you stop by performance.pluggable.com to see all of our other gaming and streaming related products from our soon to be released headset, our mechanical keyboard and gaming mouse, as well as our Vox USB mic for all of your streaming and recording needs. We will also be doing a lot more videos on the breakdown of installing the individual capture cards to OBS and XSplit, uh, along with um, Mac OS operating system and Linux based operating system, just to make sure that we have all of the right information for you to really easily and quickly set up your streaming and capture environment to do everything that you could possibly need.